SLT Speed Up Savariya Samagin Saddant Vasi Rallak Alu Broadband Samadata Sandha Palamu Maas Dikapura Data Double Speed Up with SLT Good evening tonight regional development president Maithripala Sirisena leaves for Nepal to participate in the Bimstech Summit 2018 Encouraging entrepreneurs, the Enterprise Sri Lanka National Exhibition gets underway. Giving clarity, former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa gives a statement at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing Sri Lankan Airlines, Sri Lankan Catering Limited and Mihin Lanka Private Limited. Remembering the disappeared, Amnesty International is adamant that enforced disappearances should be a thing of the past. This is not a problem that is of Sri Lanka alone. We cannot allow people to be disappeared by government. Maria killed more. Puerto Rico says that nearly 3000 people died following Hurricane Maria last year, dwarfing the official figure of 64. Live across the nation, this is Sri Lanka's news channel, Adha Dharana 24-7. Hello everyone, I'm Mahesh Jani and welcome to First at Nine. U.S. President Donald Trump is now blaming Google, saying that they are biased towards Democrats. We'll have all the information on our international segment, but first, we begin with a look at local news. President Maithripala Sirisena, who left the country to attend the fourth summit of the Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral Technical and Economical Cooperation, arrived at Kathmandu, Nepal this afternoon. Upon arrival, President Sirisena was received by the Vice President of Nepal. The presidents of Sri Lanka and Myanmar, the Prime Ministers of India, Bangladesh, Nepal and Thailand and the Chief Advisor of the Bhutanese government will be leading their delegations to the summit. The leaders are to adopt the fourth BIMSTEC summit declaration towards a peaceful, prosperous and sustainable Bay of Bengal region on the 31st of August upon the conclusion of the summit. The summit will start tomorrow and President Sirisena is to address it on the 31st. The Enterprise Sri Lanka National Exhibition got underway today at the Monragala District Secretariat. It is organized by the Ministry of Finance and Mass Media. The Enterprise Sri Lanka National Exhibition was declared open this morning by Minister of Finance and Mass Media Mangala Samaravira. It will be held until the 31st of August from 10 a.m. until midnight each day. The exhibition consists of 12 zones with 515 stalls maintained by players of both public and private sectors. A large education zone, entertainment zone and music concerts are also part of the exhibition. In the meantime, Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe participated in the official opening ceremony held in the evening. Japanese State Minister of Foreign Affairs Kasuyuki Nakani, who is on a diplomatic visit to Sri Lanka, met Prime Minister Ronald Wickremesinghe this morning at Temple Trees. Japanese delegation arrived in the country last night and they were received by Japanese ambassador to Sri Lanka Kenichi Sugunuma at the Bandaranaike International Airport. Officials at the Japanese embassy in Colombo stated that the visit will help further consolidate the comprehensive partnership between Japan and Sri Lanka. They added that the state minister will participate in the commissioning ceremony of the patrol vessel donated by Japan to Sri Lanka at the Colombo port tomorrow. At the ceremony, the two patrol vessels will be handed over to Sri Lanka Coast Guard. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa makes, uh, makes the President and Prime Minister accountable for the expenses of the recently tabled delimitation report. The report was defeated in Parliament without managing a single vote in favour. The former President was responding to questions raised by media in Narvin today. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksha arrived at the Patiragoda Nalandarama temple in Navinna to pay his last respects to the remains of the late Sadharma Kirti Sri Shastrapati Pandita Venerable Udhamulle Sarnapala Thera. 
Cabinet co spokesperson Minister Dr. Rajita Senaratna today brushed off calls by the Chief Minister of the Northern Province who calls for the removal of war memorials from the North. Addressing the Cabinet media briefing, Minister Senaratna noted that war memorials are the least of the Northern people's concerns and they have other pressing issues. The Cabinet of Ministers met yesterday and during which approval was given to conduct relevant negotiations and enter into respective loan agreements in securing funds to the tune of 25 million US dollars from the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development of the World Bank. The funds are intended to be utilized in improving a structure to assist public-private partnership and for financing necessary infrastructure facilities. Approval was also given for the implementation of an assessment to identify chemical disaster risks in Sri Lanka during the period of 2019 to 2020. A study conducted by the National Building Research Organization cited that many of the chemical accidents in Sri Lanka are the results of unawareness, lack of premises maintenance, weakness of supervision and wrong industrial use. The Cabinet, meanwhile, gave the green light to invest all funds of the Mahapala Higher Education Scholarship Trust Fund in government banks and central bank bonds, liquidating the functions of National Wealth Corporation Limited and the National Wealth Securities Company. The move intends to formalise investments. In the meantime, during the Cabinet media briefing held today, journalists raised the issue of public taking to the streets against a certain project worked off in the north. We should look into it. The government has no designs to create such settlements or to implement such projects. Is that a statement that should be made by a chief minister? A chief minister should know what to do. He should have asked the central government what it is and then issue a statement regarding it. Issues of the people in the north does not include war memorials and there are other issues that affect them. Issue of war memorials is limited to Vigneshwaran seeing them as he travels in his luxury vehicle. When we visit the North, no one ever asked us to remove war memorials and what they seek is the fulfilment of their basic needs. Vigneshwaran's remarks has no impact in the North. People in North even have a positive outlook on the security forces. In other local stories we have for you tonight, former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa seems uninterested in the identity of the next president, as long as former President Mahindra Rajapaksa is made Prime Minister. The former Defence Secretary arrived at the Presidential Commission appointed to probe Sri Lankan Airlines, Sri Lankan Catering Limited and Mihin Lanka Private Limited. Speaking to media after appearing before the Commission, he said, if the former President cannot contest the presidency, the Premiership is the next best thing. Following summons, former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajpaksa today arrived to provide a statement at the Presidential Commission to inquire allegations of large-scale fraud and malpractices at Sri Lankan Airlines, Sri Lankan Catering Limited and Mihin Lanka Private Limited. Former President Secretary Lalit Viratung and former Secretary to the Ministry of Finance P.B. Jayasundara were also summoned to the Presidential Commission today. As members of the media gathered in anticipation, the former Defence Secretary emerged following a two-hour-long statement. I was in the direct board of Mihin Lanka Private Limited, but I never took a salary or privileges for my services. I made my testimony regarding the functions of the director board. Although you said that the entire country knows of it, I myself 
has no idea of it. The country only wants former President Mahindra Rajpaksha, and if he can't contest as a presidential candidate, the next best option for him would be the premiership. It wouldn't really matter who the president is as long as Mahindra Rajpaksha is the prime minister. Everyone who loves the country must join with us to gather in Colombo. This is not being political. I am fulfilling my duty as a citizen of this country. Amnesty International calls enforced disappearances to attention, saying it is not an issue unique to Sri Lanka and the practice should not exist in this day and age. Lamenting the refusal by South Asian countries to ink the International Convention on Enforced Disappearances, South Asian Regional Director of Amnesty International, Biraj Patnaik, believes that some governments use enforced disappearances as a tactic to discourage activists. He was speaking yesterday following a solidarity event held in Colombo, marking the International Day of Disappeared, which falls tomorrow. This is not a problem that is of Sri Lanka alone. Increasingly, countries across South Asia have used enforced disappearances as a tactic to silence dissenters and to silence critics. Today, as we speak about the rights of human rights defenders, and we have very brave ones from across the subcontinent who have gathered here, I bring the unfortunate news that India has gone ahead and across six cities raided and arrested a large number of human rights activists. Very prominent human rights activists have been arrested in India today, two days before uh, this event that we are doing. So this is a problem that is not unique to Sri Lanka. This is a problem because no country after country in South Asia has refused to sign the in International Convention on Enforced Disappearances. This is 2018. We cannot allow people to be disappeared by governments, by elected governments, operating under the respective constitutions of their countries and international law to get away with this. This is unacceptable. It should not happen to anybody. And it's time that South Asia ended this practice. The debate on the Sri Lanka-Singapore Free Trade Agreement took another turn yesterday when the joint opposition highlighted an article on Singaporean newspaper Business Times saying the Sri Lankan government is attempting to resolve the garbage issue of Singapore. During a media briefing in Colombo today, the United National Party moved to refute these claims, saying the joint opposition is exploiting the article in question to spread false rumours on the FTA. We look down upon the statements made by the joint opposition on the Singapore Free Trade Agreement. They say that an article published in the newspaper Business Times includes the issue of waste. It clearly says that the issue of garbage has become a huge problem in Singapore. They're trying to draw lines between this article and the Singapore Sri Lanka Free Trade Agreement. Sri Lanka is not even mentioned in the article. I should clearly say that not anything can be brought in just because an agreement is signed. It mentions a list of traditional goods that's mentioned in any agreement, but all of it's not possible. You can't say all the educated are against this. It is clear that certain so-called organizations act according to a political agenda and it is also clear that the Rajapakshas are behind it. Minister of Transport and Civil Aviation Nimal Siripala de Silva expresses hope of holding provincial council elections soon once the Delimitation Review Committee completes its report within two months. The SLFP senior vice president made this remark today while addressing a media briefing at the party headquarters in Colombo. The delimitation report was defeated with the loopholes being pointed out by various political parties. The way to move for an election soon is to amend the report and get it passed in Parliament. Once the report is submitted, we can go for an election within two to three months. The new committee must correct the shortcomings after discussing with all stakeholders. Then it should be given to the President. If he gazettes it, we can go for an election soon, and then the President, the Prime Minister or any other party cannot postpone elections. Why do you seek my views? If you like, you can do it. We are not here to air our personal views. We can't appoint the Prime Minister or the President. The people will elect a new President and a Prime Minister at the right time.
Parliamentarian Cecil Premachanta today gave clarity of the participation of the SLFP's group of 16 in the mass protest organized by the Joint Opposition on the 5th of next month. Addressing a media briefing held in Colombo today, Parliamentarian Premachanta gave his assurance over the participation of at least 15 of the breakaway group's members. The group of parliamentarians which joined the joint opposition recently will be participating in the mass protest as members of the joint opposition. What happened with the delimitation report? The president appointed the committee, but even the subject minister himself rejected the report once it was presented in parliament. Now the spokesperson of the SLFP says that the prime minister has an alternative to this situation. He doesn't have to say it because it's already included in the act. Those who are in these positions are acting as if they are the jokers in a pack of cards. They are taking the remaining SLFP members towards the United National Party now while boasting that they got 14% in the local authorities' election. All they actually got was 13.5%. Don't forget that it was because the UPFA got 4.7 million votes that 12 were chosen from the national list. Six of them lost their districts and were sent home. One of those who was sent home has now become the spokesperson for the SLFP. <laughs> The Lawyers Association affiliated to the Sri Lanka Podujana Perimuna accuses that they did not see any transference at the government's process of selecting and appointing judges to the newly set up special high court. SLPP's General Secretary, Attorney at Law, Sagra Kariwasa, made this remark addressing a media briefing held today. By establishing the, this new trial at bar, the government is trying they are level based to abuse the process of law. We all know earlier the pro procedure was for the Chief Justice to nominate the judges and refer the matters for a trial at bar. Now this particular court that has been established is a court where they are referring a special matters which are, have been chosen by the Attorney General. And since this court is uh, looking into special matters referred by the Attorney General, which are very political nature. At least they must inform the public as to how they have chosen the judges for this particular special trial at bar. There is no transparency whatsoever and they have not been able to inform the public as to how they have chosen these judges and on what basis or on what criteria the judges have been selected for the trial at bar. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verana 24-7. More local news. The U.S. Coast Guard handed over a high-endurance cutter, which was formerly known as the USCGC Sherman, to sh the Sri Lankan Navy. The cutter, a gift from the United States, will be the largest ship in the Sri Lankan fleet, and it strengthens defense cooperations between the two countries. A high-endurance cutter, which was formerly known as USCGC Sherman, was handed over to Sri Lanka Navy on Monday in a ceremony presided over by Commander of the Sri Lanka Navy, Vice Admiral Sirimewan Ranasinghe and Rear Admiral Michael Haycook of the US Coast Guard. Measuring at 115 metres in length, the cutter can carry a full staff of 167 crew members. The ship will increase Sri Lanka's ability to patrol its exclusive economic zone, providing additional security for ships from all nations that transit the busy sea lanes of the Indian Ocean. For over a month, 110 Sri Lankan sailors have been training with the Sherman's crew on operating the vessel. The new ship will join the SLNS Samudura, also a former US Coast Guard vessel that was gifted to Sri Lanka in 2004. It is going to serve the exclusive economic zone surveillance, which is seven times the mass, the land mass of the country, and look after the search and rescue region, which is 27 times the land mass of the country, and the east-west sea lines of communication that run just south of my country and then to prevent the narcotic influx that has become a menace to my country assist the fishermen that leave our shores it is a huge assistance by the united states and this is 
becoming even a stronger tie between the two nations. It is not just the two navies. It is a between a people-to-people -people connection that gives through Sherman an added, added advantage in building that relationship. In recent years, the people of Sri Lanka have found their nation due to its geographic location to become a, a very attractive transit point for illegal drug trade. The United States is proud to transfer this cutter to the Sri Lankan government to support their efforts in the mission of curbing drug trade throughout their nation. We're proud to be partners with Sri Lanka in the fight against transnational crime and fostering maritime safety and security in the region. Let's move on to business news now. The head of the Policy Development Office of the Prime Minister's Office, Charita Ratvaste, stresses the importance of policy consistency in the tourism industry as it is imperative for the development of the sector. Speaking at the launch of the course on adventure tourism, he noted that rules and regulations are a must for the development of adventure tourism in the country. Now, as you know, this country has done very well in three sectors. That is tourism, the garment industry, and foreign employment. For only one reason, that no government dared interfere with the policy. There were no flip-flops. Consistently, the government properly supported those three. In these three sectors, whatever happened, whatever the rhetoric was, the policy was consistent. And that's a lesson for all of us, that consistent in investors, tourists, visitors, employees, in the sector are looking for consistent policy. We have to give consistent signals, otherwise there is there can be confusion and the sector can fall apart. Tourism is dynamic, it's changing. Adventure is the way to go. People are looking for different experiences. They want to go on hikes, they want to go ballooning. Any civilized society is rules-based. You need rules. And to get rules, you must draft the rule, get consensus, publicize it, and have the support services. And we must first of all understand that it is in the interest of the industry, of the sector, to bring those in. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Avadharana 24-7. International News Now. Officials in Puerto Rico now says that nearly 3,000 people died following Hurricane Maria, which devastated the U.S. island territory in September last year. The revised death toll is nearly 50 times the previous estimate of 64. Puerto Rico has struggled to repair its infrastructure and power grid since the storm and is asking U.S. Congress for $139 billion in recovery funds. Hurricane Maria, the most powerful storm to strike Puerto Rico in nearly 90 years, is estimated to account for nearly 3,000 deaths, far more than the official toll of mere 64. A study commissioned by the island's government and released yesterday found that 2,975 deaths could be attributed directly or indirectly to Maria from the time it struck in September last year to mid-February this year, based on comparisons between predicted mortality under normal circumstances and deaths documented after the storm. The study, commissioned by Puerto Rico Governor Ricardo Rosseo and conducted by George Washington University's Milken Institute School of Public Health, also found that the risk of death from the hurricane was substantially higher for the poor and the elderly men. A previous study from a Harvard University-led research team released in May estimated that 4,645 lives were lost from Maria on the Caribbean island and the Pennsylvania State University study put the number at 1,085. The emergency response to the storm, which caused an estimated $90 billion worth of property damage, became highly politicized as the Trump administration was criticized for being slow to recognize the gravity of the devastation. It is also accused of being too sluggish in providing disaster relief to Puerto Rico, a U.S. territory of more than 3 million residents. U.S. President Donald Trump warned Google, Twitter and Facebook amid a row over perceived bias. He said that they had to be very careful after earlier accusing Google of rigging the search results for the phrase Trump News. An aide said the administration was looking into the issue of regulation.
when confronted with accusations of rigging the search results for the phrase Trump News by US President Donald Trump, Google said its search engine set no political agenda and was not biased towards any political ideology. Speaking to reporters at the White House, Trump said Google had really taken a lot of advantage of a lot of people. Yeah, I think Google is uh, really taking advantage of a lot of people, and I think that's a very serious thing, and it's a very serious charge. I think what Google and what others are doing, if you look at what's going on at Twitter, if you look at what's going on in Facebook, uh, they better be careful because you're, you can't do that to people. You can't do it. We have tremendous, we have literally thousands and thousands of complaints coming in, and you just can't do that. So I think that Google and Twitter and Facebook, they're really treading on very, very troubled territory, and they have to be careful. It's not fair to large portions of the population. Well, stones were thrown and boats rammed each other as French and British fishermen clashed in the channel yesterday over access to scallops. The two sides have been at each other for years over the prized shellfish. The British fishermen were heavily outnumbered by five boats to 35 French vessels and were eventually chased from the scallops rich waters of Normandy. French fishermen have been accused of throwing insults, rocks and smoke bombs at their British rivals in the English Channel in a vicious scrap over scallops. The clash happened around 22 kilometres off the Normandy coast where British boats are legally entitled to fish in the scallop rich area. But their presence has infuriated the French, who accused the British of shamelessly depleting shellfish stocks. Now UK fishermen are demanding government protection, while the French bewail the loss of a primary resource. Now let's take a look at other emerging stories from across the world. Some 300 endangered olive ridley sea turtles were found dead floating in the waters off Mexico's southern coast yesterday after they were caught in fishing nets. The deaths come days after more than a hundred of the same species perished due to unknown causes. The olive ridley, in danger of extinction, measure about 29 inches and weigh around 45 kilos. They arrive en masse on Mexico's Pacific coast every year to spawn between June and September with some arriving as early as May. A huge bang was reportedly heard by residents in Western Australia after a giant mysterious ball of light beamed across the night sky. Social media went into a frenzy with reports from baffled Aussies who said the flaming object ominously lit up the sky at around 7.40pm local time last night. The fireball is however believed to be a meteorite. Times Square was a buzz yesterday as bees swarmed a hot dog stand, prompting police to shut down the streets and call a beekeeper as tourists looked on. About 30,000 bees gathered atop the food cart's umbrella. It's unknown what attracted the bees to the umbrella. New York police cordoned off 43rd Street at the 7th Avenue while the department's beekeeper vacuumed the insects into a bucket. Crimea's Stiagan Safari Park now has some new additions following the birth of two Amur leopard cubs. Leopards are notoriously difficult to breed in the wild because of their complex mating habits and mothers rejecting offspring is not uncommon. The birds mark an uptick in numbers for the critically endangered big cat with only a few dozen said to remain in the wild. Sports News Sri Lanka will turn to seven aside rugby tomorrow in hope of securing a medal at the Asian Games worked off in Jakarta. High pinned on track and field events failed to deliver a medal, but with Sri Lanka placed fourth in Asia's seven aside rugby, expectations are high. All right, let's move on. Uh, with other story, uh, sports stories we have for you tonight, conditions at the U.S. Open were described as dangerous as firemen had to retire from their first round matches yesterday because of heat-related issues. Temperatures close to 38 uh, Celsius degrees in New York were made more stifling by humidity levels of over 50 percent. Russia's Mikhail Yuzhny is among the heat-related retirees and is a sad end for him as this was the Russian's final Grand Slam tournament 
end with the former world number eight set to retire from tennis next month at the age of 36. Roger Federer made light of energy sapping conditions to brush past Japan's Yoshihito Nishioka 6-2-6-2-6-4 in his opening match at the Flushing Meadows. Next up for the Swiss is a second round clash with unseeded Frenchman Benoit Paire. Wimbledon champion Novak Djokovic on the other hand survived a scare and searing heat to advance to the second round after beating Martin Fushevic 6-3-3-6-6-4-6 love. Meanwhile, German Alexander Zverev had no problems dispatching lucky loser Peter Polanski in the first round of the US Open 6-2, 6-1, 6-2 in just 95 minutes. The German, who has struggled to break through at Grand Slams, had added Ivan Lendl to his coaching staff. Nick Kyrgios sweated out a 7-5-2-6-6-4-6-2 win over Radu Albot to reach the second round after what appeared to be an uncomfortable and a lethargic start. Meanwhile, in the women's draw, former world number one Caroline Wozniacki cruised past era prone Samantha Stauser 6 3 6 2 to reach the second round of the US Open yesterday. Fourth seed Angelique Kerber, meanwhile, showed she has fully recovered from last year's US Open hangover by disposing of Russian Margarita Gasparian 7 6 6 3 to advance into the second round. Maria Sharapova overcame a shaky start and survived a spirited fight back from Patty Schneider to defeat the Swiss veteran 6-2-7-6 to book a place in the second round. Sharapova next faces Romania's Sorana Krista. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Therana 24-7. A very good evening everyone and welcome to Forecast First. With the sun being directly over the latitudes of Sri Lanka until the 7th of next month, people in some areas of the country are in for some sustained high temperatures. Eastern province will have to bear the brunt of it with the highest temperature of 35 degrees Celsius expected from the Ampara district. Temperatures in the north will also be higher but the central hills as usual will be much milder with numbers dipping to around 20 degrees. Moving on to your rain forecast now, showers and thunder showers are expected in most districts tomorrow, but our viewers in Jaffna, Mana, Colombo, Gol and Kandy will have some sunny weather. That's all that we have from the Weather Centre tonight. Up next is your City by City forecast. And that is a part of your world tonight right here on Other Than 24-7. Now, Mahesh Johnny, first at nine, will return tomorrow at the same time. Be sure to join us then. And before we wrap things up, we're going to take you to the 23rd Sumathi Awards Ceremony, which is currently underway, with TV that are now claiming a number of awards. Here's a look at the show. The 23rd Sumathi Award Ceremony is currently underway and Adha Derna bagged the award for the best current news reporting through Anoj Pragati Karunaratna. Adha Derna Zukusa, meanwhile, won second place for best investigative reporting. In the meantime, Kalum Srimal claimed the award for best TV presenter for the program Ma Noana Mama. Rabin Kanishka became the most popular actor for the teledrama Devani Inima, telecast on TV Derana. The children's educational program Tintin Mama also telecast on TV Derana, came top in its category. 